Welcome to Retro Studios. I've got this Squire and it's got a bit of a wonky neck so the thin E string actually goes off towards the edge of the neck on this side so I think the neck's a bit crooked. Um, actually have seen this problem on a few Squires so I don't know if it's the CNC machine that's cutting the neck pocket wrong or if the bridge is in the wrong place but either way one of these two things is wrong. There's a few ways of dealing with this either you could cut a new neck pocket that's straight but then you'd have a gap that tapers or you could just cut it bigger and square and then fill it with packers but you can see the packers. Because I don't want to chip the finish on this or see packers so if I did sort of widen the pocket there could be some breakout. I'm thinking I'll move the bridge over a millimetre so take all the screws out, fill them and try and put the bridge in new holes. I don't know if it will work, I might have to move it back or forwards a millimetre or two um, so you can't see the screw holes. I've got to be very careful though because it's got through string, uh, is it called through strings? Through body strings? I don't know. So I can't move it too far but it needs to come, this whole bridge needs to move this way only about a millimetre which doesn't sound that much but trust me this is really annoying, it's just too close to the edge of the neck. So I'm going to try that. If it doesn't work, um, I'm not sure what I'll do, in fact I'll probably just sand the inside of this pocket sort of inwards and pull the neck round if possible. Well strings off, it's a good time to do it because I wanted to do Nashville tuning on this guitar so I'll do a video on that as well but yeah let's, let's see if this works. What I have done is, actually the bridge is going to fall out when I tip this up or whatever, I've put a bit of tape on the guitar body and marked where the bridge was originally and then what I did is I got um, a straight edge, so this metre long rule and I ran that along the edge of the neck and drew a line on that tape so I could see where that edge of the neck was. I did that on both sides and then marked the centre line and I'll do a little close up of this but there's a um, the centre line of where it should be and the centre line of where it is are a couple of mil off. So I thought it would only be one mil, it looks like it's about two. Still doesn't sound like a lot, but that is a lot really, I mean that's a serious error. The problem I've got is I can't move this bridge over very far because where it's routed out, the edge of the pickup hits this. I could uh, chip away at it or get the router out, can't really be bothered so I'm just going to move it over and it means the bridge isn't centred in this indent in the pit guard anymore uh, but to be honest it looks like the whole pit guard is a tiny bit wonky anyway um, yeah so my plan is all these holes I'm going to fill them with glue and um, some kind of dowel I've got some uh, like skewers for barbecue food which will probably fit that hole perfectly and then I'm going to pre-drill it with a really thin drill bit and try and move it over a couple of mil I'll probably have to re-intonate it because it would be good to move it forwards or backwards a millimetre just to try and make the new holes as far away from the old holes as possible. I know that's borderline impossible because they're only going to be two mil more this way but if I move them a couple of mil this way and you know up a mil towards the headstock it might get me out of trouble. I just think that's the easiest way of doing it. I don't really want to get a router out and route the body out. Um, not only is it quite difficult to protect the body with a router, I mean it, it's definitely doable, uh, it sort of sits on the jig, but it's just the tear out you get and then you see the packers and I think it's far more noticeable seeing it here on the neck joint than it is you know, a bit of a wonky bridge around the scratch plate. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to put some dowels in, glue it, leave a comment, let me know what you'd do. So wish me luck. <laughs>
Well, I have hammered those little dowels, I say dowels, it's um, a kebab skewer, sort of a wooden stick you use for putting food on for barbecues. Um, I always keep a load of my toolbox because they're really handy for sort of bigger holes, better than cocktail sticks. Cocktail sticks for little holes, I find the, these sort of things and cocktail stick better than matchsticks because uh, they're just harder. I don't know if they're out of hardwood. I mean, that was a side little rant, wasn't it, about what type of uh, sticks to use to fill um, screw holes, but whatever. So these are full of glue. Uh, I'm going to clean the glue off before it dries, although it's just as easy tomorrow. I'll run a standing knife blade flat along the guitar face just to take off these little bits tomorrow when it's dry. Um, and then try and refit the bridge. I, I'm going to leave it overnight. It has just occurred to me that I've got a studio session tomorrow morning. Um, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this because I, I need this guitar done for tomorrow night. Makes it more fun. Do everything uh, last minute. Yeah. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Welcome back. It's the next day so all the glue's dried. I've just moved the bridge into the position I want it and I've put a straight edge on it so that the edge of the straight edge sits in the middle notch of the bridge saddle and in the notch of the thin E string uh, at the top of the neck, or, you know, in the nut just so I can see where that E string will run and that's definitely a lot better than it was. Um, I also did the same thing for the thick E to make sure that that string's not going to sit over the edge of the neck because you know you don't want to create a problem over this side. Oh, it's, it's just where the bridge should have been originally to be honest. I think it's less that the bridge needs moving, it's more that the neck's not quite at the right angle just looking at the scratch plate because it's there's the same distance around here. This is quite nicely centered. The scratch plate probably could come over a mill, but I'm not re-drilling eight holes because ah, it's just a minefield. I don't think it will work particularly well. I think the best option would have been to do the neck pocket, but I don't want to see um, shims around the neck pocket. I've seen that before and I don't think it looks the best. I don't want any chip out uh, or tear out. So I think this will be less noticeable. And it's my guitar. This I don't know if it's the best approach, but this is, how I want it to look. You know, an off-centered bridge around the scratch plate to me is less offensive than a load of packing around the neck. Um, I mean, I should have just made the guitar properly, but yeah, I didn't make it. Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, from yesterday, I don't know if you remember, well, <laughs> you probably do, because it was about 10 seconds ago in this video, is there's these tiny bits of wood sticking out, so what I'm gonna do is get a standing knife blade and run it really flat along the guitar, like, so it's really low profile and just cut these bits off. It shouldn't scratch the paint if you get it really low. Don't go in at an angle like that. You want the blade really low just to take these bits off. I actually forgot to get rid of the glue residue, but I don't really care. Um, just as another note, the bit where the strings go through the body, there's sort of a, a ridge cut in. So I don't think it's going to be a problem this has moved over a mill. I, it's completely fine. And when I put it in position and sort of lift it up to let a little bit of light in, I can see that the strings will go through it. So I'm going to do that. Um, Pre-drill new screw holes a tiny bit over, um, sort of a one mil pilot hole, and then put the screws back in. And then I'm going to restring it, but the strings aren't here yet. I probably won't show you the restringing because that's not particularly interesting. In fact, I'm going to do a video on Nashville tuning anyway, so watch that separately. And then we'll see if it's any better. I mean, it can't be worse. Um, yeah, wish me luck. Welcome back, it's all done. Um, when doing this sort of thing, I would recommend that you put in a couple of screws, check it straight, and then put the rest in. I was quite lucky, it was absolutely fine. I also had um, a couple of old guitar strings that I just put on here just to check it is straight. Um, I mean, it's almost absolutely perfect now. I'd say if anything, it's too far the side of the thick E string, but by like, quarter of a millimeter so I don't care it's way better than it was um, I, I mean I could move the scratch plate over so the bridge isn't centered in this little indent in the scratch plate anymore but I don't care there's no you know you don't see any chipping out here and 
I just don't care. I think this, this is the best way, in my opinion, of doing it on my guitar. I didn't move the bridge forwards or backwards, I just moved it sideways, so the intonation, intonation, the intonation should be the same. I'm gonna restring it and then uh, probably just do a nice close-up shot <laughs> for the outro. But hopefully that'll help someone, because uh, if you've got a squire, it's generally the telecaster. On strats, it's not as big a problem. It's got quite a square neck joint on a, on a telecaster, so, you can't really pull it round on a Telecaster, but on a Strat, I would grab it, but it's there, it's more rounded. It's generally got a bit more play, so if it's not straight, you can realign it. But on Telecasters, especially on uh, Squire Telecasters, I've seen this on more than one occasion. So hopefully this video will help someone. Yeah, I'm gonna put some strings on it. Uh, Nashville tuning, it's a high strung guitar. So watch that video because that should be interesting. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, tell everyone.